thank you very much, uh, Martin and Milena. This is uh, uh, great fun. So yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, rock drum kit solos. So uh, I, before I do, I, I want to uh, uh, just uh, acknowledge that this talk is being broadcast from land that's part of the traditional territories of the uh, Osheti. Ocheti Shakoing, uh, Kikapoi, and Miamia nations. I apologize for the pronunciation. Uh, Black, indigenous, and people of color, their lives and their heritages matter. So rock drums are traditionally played on a drum kit. So this is a five piece kit because it has five drums there. Um, also some symbols, but when you count the number of drums, uh, you only count the uh, when you count the size of the kit, you only count the actual number of the drums. Um, so my kit is actually an electronic kit, but looks very much the same. And let us see if I can play this clip. Rock drum music is traditionally played on a drum kit, which consists of several drums, as you can see here, and also some cymbals and sometimes other percussion instruments. The sort of basic kit is a five piece kit. Um, I've actually got a six-piece kit here, uh, but these refer to the drums. Uh, we have a snare drum, a bass drum or a kick drum, and uh, uh, a five-piece kit has three toms uh, or tom-toms, a high, a middle, and a low. I've got a, an extra high one here. And then there are also some cymbals. Those aren't counted as uh, part of the five pieces, but they're a standard part of the kit. Um, we have a hi-hat over here, which can be played closed like this, or by releasing the foot pedal, when you play it open, it can also be stepped with the foot. So we'll be using those techniques. And uh, I've got a ride cymbal over here, um, which I'm going to be playing either on the main part of the cymbal, or up here on the bell, which is called that because it is kind of a bell sound. Um, and I've also got a couple of other symbols here, crash symbols, which I, I'm not going to be playing. Okay, so that's the layout of the kit. Um, so uh, here it is from a top view, uh, the same uh, uh, five uh, uh, drums, uh, uh, the snare drum, the kick drum, and the three toms, and uh, a couple of symbols. Um, all right. So um, pieces for solo drum kit, um, it's a fairly unusual thing to compose a solo uh, piece for, but uh, um, it's not unheard of. There's a couple of composers who have uh, uh, composed uh, concert pieces. Frank Zappa has, um, John Cage has, uh, a few others. Um, and there's also a, a fairly large body of uh, literature um, of etudes, which are uh, uh, studies for, for students, uh, either just for practice or uh, for competitions uh, in America. I don't know about other countries. Uh, in America, it's uh, fairly common for high school uh, uh, band uh, uh, performers to, to, to have competitions where they, they play solo pieces and are judged on them. Um, there are basically two different types of rock drum patterns that make up uh, a piece of, of rock music. Um, you're either playing time, which is a, a rhythmic pattern, um, which basically just anchors the piece, uh, establishes the beat. So this is a fairly ordinary 4-4 four, four, um, with, uh, with a back beat here. So uh, you can see uh, the, uh, can you see my, uh, my cursor? Yes, we can see it. Yeah. Okay. Super. So uh, uh, the the bass drum here playing on one and three, and also on the end of three, the backbeat here, the snare drum on the two and the four, and then some cymbals. So um, at the end of a phrase, um, when the singer stops or the guitarist uh, uh, stops doing his uh, his doodling around. Um, there might be a, you know a bit of a breath, and the drummer might fill that in, and that's called filling. So the drummer might play something a little more interesting at the end of a phrase. Um, it's, a, it's sort of a, a, mini, uh, a mini solo, but it's really just to, to um, you know, fill the time, I guess. All right. So Josh, if you're can you playing... maybe, sorry, sorry to interrupt, can you maybe move the zoom bar at the top of your screen like it, 
a little bit further up. Oh, is it, I didn't realize. Oh, can you see that? Yeah. Uh, um, we, we can see that, and for the video, maybe it would be good to to have the head the um, the headings. Oh, you know, I can move yeah. on to a different. Uh, yeah, perfect. Video. That looks okay. great. Thank Sorry you so about much. that. Sorry about that. So, um, yeah, okay. So, so uh, filling and playing playing time and filling. So back to playing time for a moment. Um, so uh, generally, you've got three things going at once, three sort of lines of music going, if you're um, used to thinking about uh, uh, music that way. Um, so you've got something going on the cymbals, which is, uh, um, again, a fairly simple repeated pattern, uh, which is just uh, establishing sort of a background of sound. Uh, you've got the backbeat, as I mentioned, so the cymbals are up here continually, the backbeat on two and four, if it's a four, four piece of music. And then you've got the bass line, um, which uh, might involve other instruments besides the bass drum. It uh, 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 could go up to the snare at uh, some points which are not the backbeat or uh, use a, the, the low tom, it's fairly common um, as a, a decoration in the bass line. Um, I'm going to be sticking mostly uh, on the actual bass drum uh, or, or drum. Uh, those are synonyms. Um, for the filling, I'm going to be sticking to what's called linear fills. Linear fills means the notes are basically just played one at a time. That's not a uh, um, that's not the only style of filling that you can you can do, but uh, uh, it's a relatively common one. Um, I'm going to, to, to hold my uh, uh, discussion to just using the snare drum, the three toms, and the bass drum. You can mix in cymbals and other things, but I'm not going to. Uh, and I'm going to restrict to using right lead for reasons which might become clear in a bit, um, by which I mean um, every um, stronger beat is going to use the right hand. So if I, I skip a beat here, I'm just going to skip a hand and then come back in with the right hand. So uh, the reason I'm going to do that is, is maybe you saw, and maybe I can bring it, but yeah, okay, here we go. So, so um, you can tell that um, the higher toms are uh, on the same basic level up here, and the, the snare and the low tom are on another level. And uh, playing two drums on the same level with your hands crossed, I don't know if you can, I can't see my own camera, so maybe you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, that's relatively difficult to play those two drums in quick succession, not impossible, not a lot of fun. So we're going to avoid crossing our hands from the snare to the low tom or vice versa, and also crossing from the high to the mid tom or vice versa. So we're gonna put some conditions on the fills. It also makes it a little more mathematically interesting, I think. So how we're going to control all of this is using Markov chains. So a Markov chain is a random process that where you go next is determined by a probability and where you are standing right now. So this is a, a Markov chain known as a drunkard's walk, a finite version of it. Um, it's you know meant to evoke a person who is uh, inebriated and doesn't quite know where they're going. So um, if they're in the middle at the when they maybe start, they're just going to half the time stumble over this way and half the time stumble over that way. Um, and then if they're over here, half the time they stumble over that way and half the time they stumble over that way. And uh, if they're over here, I guess they just fall down. Um, they never go anywhere in this particular version of the drunkard's walk. So this is um, called an absorbing Markov chain uh, because uh, you get stuck at the end. Um, Please let me know if there are any, any questions uh, uh, along the way. Just uh, feel free to unmute and interrupt. So we're gonna use the Markov chains to control the dynamics. So um, uh, musical dynamics are, are denoted with uh, uh, letters for things like piano, pianissimo, forte, et cetera. So each, uh, there are six of them uh, uh, from pianissimo uh, up through uh, uh, fortissimo. And uh, so I'm going to um, randomly choose a level based on the current level. I'm going to choose the next level. Um, so to a, you know, 
avoid uh, uh, doing anything too jarring, uh, unless it's for a special effect maybe. Um, and then uh, when I do make a transition from one section to the next, I'm either gonna go up or down. And again, that could be um, in the direction which we're actually going. This is actually getting louder. This is a piano section which gets louder at the end and then drops down suddenly for, for a little bit of a, a, a dramatic effect there. So uh, that's all gonna be controlled by, by a Markov chain. Another Markov chain is gonna control which symbol I choose and what the pattern is, whether it's going to be a steady pattern or have some broken rhythm or, or uh, some special effects, uh, talking about like the, using the bell of the ride symbol or the uh, open version of the hi-hat. And there are 10 choices there in the, in the current version of the program. Um, and then the baseline is uh, controlled um, and basically, again, in the current version of the program, um, this is basically just uh, where the uh, bass notes are placed, uh, I'm not really varying the instrumentation, um, but uh, uh, depending on the style of music, um, I might want to emphasize offbeats, uh, syncopated rhythms, I might want to have a lot of pairs of notes uh, together, I might want to avoid pairs of notes together, and I'm actually um, treating these as, um, as pairs. So there's four choices for each pair. You can either have both notes, the first but not the second, um, the second but not the first in a syncopated rhythm um, or both of them. So it, this controls whether the rhythm is syncopated and straight or syncopated or straight as well as how dense it is. Okay, what else? And then the fill is controlled by another Markov chain um, which given each note, chooses the next note or a rest. So, um, and I do this separately uh, for when I'm going from a left hand to a right hand, separately, the, or, or when I'm going from a right hand to a left hand, um, again, so that I can control the syncopation, but also so that I can tell it not to play those awkward phrasings where uh, one hand crosses over the other in an awkward way. So those are the components. Um, internally in my computer program, um, all of these things are represented by transition matrices. So basically this just says, if you're in position one, or I guess the position is labeled negative two. If you're in position negative two, you have a hundred percent chance of staying in negative two. But if you're in position negative one, you have a 50% chance of going to position negative two and a 50% chance of going to position zero. So um, there are lots and lots of matrices. Um, there's one that controls the dynamics here, one that controls the symbols, and um, these are invoked uh, one time for each um, section of the music. Um, the, there's one that controls uh, every bass line that's invoked 12 times. Um, and there's, sorry, no, this is only invoked four times because these are actually three repeats of the, Nope, sorry, I was right the first time. <laughs> it's invoked 12 times. Um, and then a fill markup chain, which is invoked four times, one for, for each uh, ending of, of each of the four sections of music. That might become, probably will become more clear when I actually play you an example. Um, the compositional software is implemented in uh, Maple for no particularly good reason, uh, except that that's uh, uh, how I started it out. Um, I started out uh, directly writing a MIDI file, and that was something I knew how to do in Maple, but that's not the way it ended up. Um, I'll show you how it ended up in a moment. Um, the transition matrices could have been done using some sort of machine learning to, to, to try to capture a style, but I actually chose to, to put it all together myself because I liked the idea that the computer program would have its own twist on the style, which was, you know, I know how to, 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 to compose in, in the style as a human. I wanted to see if the machine could compose in the style as a machine and put its own sort of twist on it. So, uh, so for example, this is, these are the matrices that I needed for a, for a sort of funk style. And uh, what I ended up doing was having the Maple program put out uh, what's called ABC notation, um, which is 
potentially very simple, just using the notes of the musical scale, A, B, C, D, E, and so on, um, but also potentially can do very complex things. So it was a nice way to start with something and then ramp it up. Um, also, it was nice because it's a, a pure text uh, uh, format. Uh, which then there are the programs that convert those into musical scores and also into MIDI. Um, so let's see, what have I got here? Ah, so this is a musical score that's output by this program. Um, and I also have a MIDI file um, so that the computer can play this, um, but I really wanted this to be something that while, in the while it was composed by the computer, my goal was to have it playable by a human. So the idea was, you know, in avoiding these difficult crossings and things, that it, uh, the output would be something which a human being uh, with a moderate amount of, of practice or, or, and or training um, could actually play as, you know, as an etude, as a study piece. Um, so um, I attempted to do that. And uh, I will say that... Um, this did not get as much rehearsal as it really should have. And I apologize for that. Um, I only uh, composed this particular piece. I was, uh, this is in a Latin style or what rock musicians call a Latin style, which has some resemblance to actual Latin American music, although maybe not a whole lot. Um, and I only got the Latin program running a few days ago. So this, I apologize for the amount of rehearsal that this has gotten, but maybe I'll just play it instead of fussing. So the, the Latin influence on that is uh, in the uh, um, uh, symbol pattern with the, the three notes and the pause um, and the tendency of the bass to come on the, um, uh, on the downbeats here and on the uh, um, upbeat right before the, uh, the 16th note right before uh, the next beat. Um, okay. I'd like to refine that Latin style, uh, make it uh, sound more like uh, Latin music if I, if I can, uh, I'm sure I can. Um, have some more styles, um, I don't know, country, disco, who knows. Um, since they're matrices, I could you know, take 
three fifths of the Latin style and two fifths of the rock style and see what happens. I haven't had a chance to try that yet, but that'd be interesting. Um, and then there's lots of other uh, uh, features of, of drum music, which, uh, which I could add. And I, I hope to, to keep working on this and keep adding those. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs>